and it was always so funny to take a lesson on a Sunday at at Fontainebleau, and the, of course the castle was closed on Sundays. Nobody could get in the gates or anything, or at least when when she had lessons early in in the day in the morning. So you'd have to go in the fence and uh, pass by the garden and get to the fence of 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 uh, the, the castle, and then you'd have to go up to this window and Mademoiselle Dieudonnet would be there with a key that was about this long. Mm, I remember those keys. keys. And she had to drop them down and then you had to unlock that door and then lock it again, walk up the stairs, give the keys to, to Mademoiselle Dieudonnet and then wait for the clock to go ding. And then Boulanger would say, but come in, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> and if you were not on time, then you'd get it. <laughs> I didn't know she ever gave lessons on Sunday. Uh -huh. I'm not sure how the people in France, you know, they were mostly Catholics. If you ever ran across somebody who knew a Protestant, they would point and say, she is Protestant, you know. I don't know how Mademoiselle Boulanger felt about religion. But I do know that she went to midnight mass on Christmas Eve because I was there one time. I don't know why I was there on Christmas Eve. That might have been the time that Marc Chagall came. Uh -huh. And she and Mademoiselle Dudonay walked out together, both of them had on black coats, going to midnight mass. And so I know that she went to mass. Did she wear her, her, her church hat, the same church hat that she always wore when they had the... So, no. No, I even pictures no. of her with with Mademoiselle Dieudonné and and Nadia with her church hat. No, no, she never wore anything. I mean, not at, not at the moment. She may have had something. You know, they had prayer caps and things. She may have had something in her. Well, she had, she had this every time that they they had those those um uh, those concerts in Trinité to uh, celebrate the, the 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 death of of uh, her sister every year she would wear her church hat then for sure i had never seen the and i went to the i went to it every time she would have it she would invite all of her students mm -hmm. and i would always go i remember they would have somewhere up in the gallery they would have a string quartet or something playing some music right and I remember ave verum corpus was one of the things they would always play every year and then they would play some music of Lily Boulanger. Oh, very much, yeah. Mm -hmm. And all that. But the uh, service that I went to each time I went was not only for her sister, but it was also for her mother. She would have a service for her sister and her mother. Oh. And she would stand at the door when you were coming out of Trinity, and she would say, thank you for coming. Right. And, and, and you all, everybody got black... Uh, edged invitations to this, which you had to answer. Oh, really? I never got oh. an invitation. I never answered it. I just knew it was there, and she would always say, "It's going to be thus and such day, and come." And I would always go. Yeah, well, but that—that that, that was the the funny thing. I mean, it was as though Lily had died the day before, and mm -hmm. the black <laughs> uh, typical thing that that, that everybody did at. Uh, uh, in in in, uh, in Europe. <laughs> well, those some of those habits, those are very old habits. Having the yearly um, mass for someone who's passed away, the folks weren't doing that anymore. Yeah, and then we wearing the thing on your arm and so forth. Yeah, the the armband, the uh, uh, black band for mourning. Right. People didn't do those things anymore, but she did. And the people that she knew did also. That's true. That's true. Oh, so I was thinking of that, that widow again. She said, this was right after the Duke of Windsor died. And she knew the Duchess of Windsor because they were next door neighbors to her in, in this Shishi area of, of, of Paris. Uh, mm. So she said, ah, but the Duchess is very, very sad these days. And that was it, you know, and you all knew why, because the, the, the Duke of Windsor had just died. So, 
Well, you know, Mademoiselle Boulanger believed that when you were sad and when you had problems, the way you dealt with it was to plunge yourself into your work. Uh -huh. work you plunge yourself into it. And that kept you from dwelling on your sadness. She may have had a point there. I, I, I think so. Did, did she ever tell you the story of how uh, she was, when, you, when you took a lesson with her at night, you had to have many extra things to go by because uh, she would say, but next, but next. And then you'd, you'd have about 10 things to do and you'd gone through them, but she'd never end those classes at night. That, so sometimes I would go in at about seven or eight o'clock in the evening and by midnight, Giuseppe would be saying, Mademoiselle, to bed, to bed. <laughs> <laughs> but if you didn't have something to say and something to show her, she 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 would just keep going, keep going. But she would dismiss you, you know. And you'd be a bad person if you, if you didn't have something just to keep going all of those extra hours. So then she said to me once, Ah, but you know, but but my dear, but one time I decided I would give lessons and I would give lessons until I dropped. And and she said, this time, I did not know how long, but it was 48 hours continuously that I gave lessons. And what happened after that, mademoiselle? But I dropped. <laughs> <laughs> did you tell about her visit to Somerset Mon? No, I did not. Uh -uh. You really can't leave that out. She said she was invited to dinner at Somerset Mons and she went to his house. And of course, when she rang the doorbell, the servant let her in, but he was nude. She said, well, she figured that he was a little bit bizarre, but she went on into the dining room and she got there and all the guests were nude. And of course we asked, well, Mademoiselle Boulogne said, what did you do? She said, I ate my dinner, of course. <laughs> Aha! Well, Somerset Maugham was, was very, very popular at, at the time, and, and he'd, he'd written all sorts of things about taking drugs and things like that back in, 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 in the Orient and so forth. Well, she managed to know people who had unusual habits, but uh, he was one of the ones that she knew who had unusual habits. But she seemed to really respect the British. And she told me that once she went out with a lord. <laughs> he said he thought I was crazy. And I thought he was so boring. <laughs> but then then when she had the, the story about, ah, but this person was a real monster, she said. He knew. 50 languages and could speak them at once. He was a monster, she said. <laughs> <laughs> that is a bit monstrous. <laughs>